I have a unanimous re uh, consent request that Jeremy King, a Secret Service detailee from my office, be granted four privileges for the remainder of the Congress. Without objection. Okay. If the Biden administration decides to allow a terrorist state access to billions of dollars, then at a bare minimum, the Biden administration must perform exceedingly strict oversight of how that money is used. It's pretty simple. Common sense requires considering the attendant risks that this money gives to Iran. The Biden administration has created a serious problem that needs strict oversight. More than all that, the Congress must also have the same regard of how the executive branch conducts its business in regard to this billions of dollars. Today, I have an on-point example to present to my colleagues. In September of this year, the administration's State Department provided Iran access to $6 billion as part of a prisoner swap agreement. Then in mid-October, the United States and the Qatar governments decided to uh, refreeze these funds due to the October 7th Hamas terrorist attack on Israel. Hamas, an Iranian-funded terrorist organization, as we all know, attacked Israel and murdered civilians, seized hostages, and destroyed towns. Hamas committed unspeakable acts of terror and evil not seen since the Nazis towards Jewish people. On October the 12th of this year, Secretary of State Blinken, Blinken addressed the international media and in that address claimed that the State Department has, quote, strict oversight of the funds and retains the right to freeze them, meaning freezing the six billion, end of quote. Now, there better be strict oversight. The taxpayers ought to require that. Exceedingly strict oversight. I now ask, what did the Secretary of State mean when he said strict oversight? I don't want, I don't want lip service from the Secretary. I want details. So on October the 12th this year, I wrote a letter actually exactly that. What are the details? My letter also sought to know what government agencies are involved in this alleged oversight. What are the roles of the respective agencies in this oversight? What enforcement mechanisms are in place to ensure compliance? How will the State Department be able to punish Iran if conditions of this $6 billion is violated? I also ask what components of the State Department are responsible for conducting this oversight, among other questions. Almost a month passed. Almost a month passed the two-week deadline to respond. The State Department did finally send me a letter. That letter was very incomplete and a very insufficient response that failed to answer the essential question. Using his words, what does strict oversight mean? The letter didn't deal with that, and it seems to be a pretty simple question. The State Department letter meekly said, quote, the U.S. will have full visibility 
and will exercise strict oversight as to how and when the funds are used. This isn't an answer. This is lip service. We're talking about billions of dollars accessible by a terrorist regime. So, as you would expect Senator Grassley to do, on November 21st, I sent a letter, a follow-up letter, to Senator Blinken, informing him of his failed response, and then again, renewing my request for Congress and the American people to know and understand what the Secretary meant by the words he used of strict oversight. The Secretary made these oversight promises publicly in an international setting. And the Secretary has an obligation to explain himself of what strict oversight is. If the State Department is engaging in strict oversight, then say what it is and give us, the Congress, the response, the, the uh, r details of that. The taxpayers deserve to know exactly how the Biden administration plans to ensure proper oversight of $6 billion to Iran. This senator obviously won't stop demanding answers, especially when it comes to a terrorist regime, access to billions of dollars that the United States has something to say about. Then on another subject, Mr. President, Iowa is home to roughly 25 different types of snakes. Some are venomous, copperhead and rattlesnakes. However, the one snake doing the most damage to Iowans is a snake that's not snake that's not even in Iowa. So I'd like to introduce you to the brown tree snake. The brown tree snake doesn't reside in Iowa, Washington, D.C., or any other state represented within the Senate. That snake lives in Guam. That snake not only damaging the native animals of Guam, it's wreaking havoc, havoc on the American taxpayers. So this gets to money. The federal government's goal, from what I've been told, is to eradicate the snakes. And that's where billions of dollars comes in. Now, they, our government's been trying to do this for the last 30 years. On June the 7th, 2023, I sent a letter to the Department of Defense, the Department of Interior, and the Department of Agriculture. I asked those three agencies how they've spent taxpayers' money to eradicate this snake from Guam. After waiting five months and an additional request on August 3, I received responses from these agencies. Alarmingly, none of the three were able to tell me how many of the snakes are thought to be on the island or the estimated timeline for the eradication. It seems to me our government ought to have better statistics that tell us what their planning is and how their goals are being met. But you can see soon that they don't have that information. My go so let me say, it's obvious with all the taxpayers' money they're getting, they ought to at least have some sort of an estimate on this subject. So what did my oversight find? We'll start with the Department of Agriculture. That department from fiscal year 2000 till right now, its budget expenditures were over $10 million. Now that's a drop in the bucket compared to others. This is what I learned from the Department of Interior. That department told me that from fiscal year 1993 to now, 
They funded over $90 million to support eradication, suppression, and, uh, uh, or, and interdiction of the brown tree snake. Now, another department, the Department of Defense, gave me this figure for the same fiscal years. It spent more than $140 million. How many more decades and hundreds of millions of dollars do we have to spend on this snake? And what kind of projects have the taxpayers funded related to this snake? Got some examples for you. Four projects in fiscal years 2009, 10, 14, and 18 related to the application of Tylenol-treated baits, which are poisonous to the snakes, two and nine-tenths million dollars. 600,000 for multiple public awareness campaigns to educate the public on Guam on how the snake affects the ecosystem and human health and other factors. $375,000 for various research projects, including improved camera monitoring of the snake, caged bird colonies as super attractors with integrated snail snake trapping, and studying the efficacy of self-resetting kill traps. $123,000 for purifying and uh, testing gecko skin compounds. $56 million in fiscal year 2023 for the brown tree snake barrier south multi-species barrier. Now that last one ought to really hit home for you. The Biden administration can't secure the southern border. Millions of immigrants are illegally crossing every year According to reports in fiscal year 2023, 172 people on the FBI's terrorist watch list have, have been encountered at the border. How many on the terrorist watch list that haven't been encountered that are gotaways? I guess we don't have a figure on that one. So the 172 are the ones that we know of. Here, Congress and the Biden administration have no problem spending $56 million on a barrier to secure land against the snake. This is a clear example of spending that's out of control and why Congress must perform more exacting oversight. Sadly, this is not a new problem. On July 22nd, 2004, the late senator from Arizona, John McCain, made the following remarks on this floor regarding earmarks identified in a de defense appropriation bill for that year, 2004. Quote, one million dollars for the brown tree snakes. Once again, the brown tree snake has slithered its way into our defense appropriation bill. I'm sure the snakes are a serious problem, but a defense appropriation act isn't the appropriate vehicle to address this issue, end of quote of John McCain's statement. So here I stand, 20 years later, identifying that this snake has continued to wreak havoc on both the island of Guam and, of course, on the American taxpayers. I recognize that the brown tree snake is a serious problem in Guam, but it's also become a serious problem robbing the American taxpayers, taking millions out of their billfolds without really any plan that I've been able to discover that the taxpayers know how or the government knows how they're going to spend the taxpayers' money to eradicate this brown tree snake. Congressional appropriations of taxpayers' money will be subject to waste, fraud, and abuse without congressional oversight. 
Accordingly, that's exactly what's needed here to better depend, determine if taxpayers' money has been used as it should have and whether these spending levels are needed entirely or at all. I yield the floor.